We now have everything we need to get the two mounts from the Secrets of Azeroth event. The first one up being Patty from the Who Done It achievement, and the other one being the Mimron's Jump Jets from the Community Secrets. Even though this event is over, these mounts are going to remain obtainable forever, so you don't need to feel like you have to rush to do this, but I will be running through everything you need to know to get these mounts. So the first one up is going to be Patty from the Who Done It achievement, and for this we need to go through various different clues to complete the achievement. The first clue up will be the Preservationist, and for this we'll need to head to the Inn within Valdraken, and there you'll see Preservationist Kathos. You'll speak to them and you'll get the first quest, Reserving Rarities. You'll speak to them again saying you want to begin, you'll get given a box, you'll open the box, and then you'll head to the Valdraken Bank. And on the left side of the bank you'll see the vault, and then in the corner you'll be able to see a glowing place where you'll be able to place the item you got out of the box. With that placed we can now head back to Kathos and you'll be able to hand in the first quest. Next up we'll be doing this ceremonial spear part of the achievement, for this you'll speak to Kathos again, and you'll have a hand in for a quest called Relic Thief, which will give you the Tuscar Ceremonial Spear. Next up, we'll want to head over to the Tuscar Village in Azur Span. And within the inn here, you'll find Elder Poa. You'll speak to them, you'll go through some dialogue, and now your spear should change into the Somkos Unyielding Spear. With that obtained, we can now head straight to the final destination, which is going to be just west of Warsung Hold in Borean Tundra. So we'll head over there, and you'll find a statue, kind of like a Tuscar looking statue, and you'll be able to place the spear in front of the statue. Next up will be the thinking cap, so we'll speak to Bobby in the inn within Valdraken, and this will give you the thinking cap notes. Next up you'll find an NPC within the same inn called Uragosa, and they'll talk about being able to cook this item called the Thunderspine Nest, and they'll give you the Thunderspine Nest shopping list. Next up we need to get the items on that shopping list, so the first one up will be the 5 Apexis Azago from Gorgon Zomu, who we'll find in the Artisan's District of Valdraken. You'll go over to them and you'll be able to purchase just the cheese. They have a bunch of different cheese around them, so this should be quite easy to see. Next up, we're going to head a little south of Valdraken, so back into Thaldrassus, and you'll see this waterfall with a bunch of water, and in the water you'll find these Tyranna. We want to kill those until you get your hands on a fresh Tyranna. Next up, we'll head over to Onaran Plains to Timber Step Outpost, which is kind of on the northeast of the zone, and there we'll find an NPC who will sell us five Thunderspine Tenders. I think his name is Aral the Butcher. You'll speak to them, they're kind of just northish in the village uh, behind a tree. You'll speak to them, purchase the tenders, and then finally we'll head to Loam, and in Loam there'll be an NPC here that will sell us the latticed Tink Horn. Now that we have all those items, we can head back to Uragosa, and they'll be able to craft the item that we need. Or alternatively, you could skip that step and buy the Thunderspine Nest straight from the auction house, because it isn't bind on pickup, so if you want to save some time, you could do that. Although you will still need to get your hands on the fresh Tyranna meat. With the fresh Tyranna meat and the 10 Thunderspine Nests, next up we're going to head over to Clinky Clink, which is at the engineering section within Valdraken. If you speak to them, you'll be able to trade the Thunderspine meat for a thought calculating apparatus. And just next to them will be Griffin, and you'll be able to give them that Tyranna that we got earlier, and you'll get the Downy Helmet Liner. Now we'll want to head south towards the work order area NPCs, and just outside of the jewel crafting shop that's nearby, you'll see Shaky Flatlap. You'll speak to them, and you'll be able to give them a thousand gold straight up to pay their tab, or you can do the tab you payment your yourself and you'll head to the secret part of the inn in Valdraken. So head over to the inn in Valdraken, go right to the back and there'll be a statue that you can target. Target that statue, do slash bow and now you'll be in the secret area. Head straight to the back and speak to the barkeeper and you'll be able to pay the tab for him which is around 400 gold. Whichever method you choose doesn't really matter unless you want to save some gold. Either way though, doing that, head back to him and you'll be able to pick up the crystal ocular lenses. Now that we have all three parts, you'll want to click on the thought calculating apparatus in your bags and now it will become a quest. You'll go and hand in that quest and now you'll get the tricked out thinking cap toy. That same NPC that gave us the toy will now have another quest for us. We're going to pick up that quest, you're going to use the toy and now you want to head over to the waterfall in the Emerald Enclave within Valdraken and you should see a bag under the waterfall that you can click on, loot the bag and now you'll be able to head back to that same NPC and in the quest and we're done with this stage. Now we're on to stage four which is an inside job. So we're going to speak to Bobby again in the inn and he'll have a quest for you called an inside job. You'll pick that up, you'll go speak to the NPC and you'll get a key. You want to take that key to the second floor of Valdraken Inn 
and the first bed on the left, right behind it in the left corner, you'll find a chest. You'll open the chest and you'll get the burial banner. We're going to take that banner to Sazil. You'll go through some dialogue with that NPC and now you'll get the preservationist cleared quest. You'll take the banner back to the chest in the inn, so the exact same bed that we were at. You'll put the item back in the chest, and then we'll head to Fangli to hand in that quest and finish this stage. The next stage is Torch of Pyref, and for this we're going to speak to Tithris, who is also in the inn. He's the Valdraken guy behind the bar. We'll speak to him and you'll get the securing an artifact. For this we want to head over to the Lifebinder Conservatory in the northwest-ish of Waking Shores, and you'll want to make sure you've got your Trinked Out Thinking Cap on. Now what we need to do here is click three levers. So the first one is going to be in the building kind of held up by the pillars and you'll find it on the left-ish side inside this building. You should see the lever, click that and that's the first one done. Then we're going to head into the building directly to the left of this building. You'll head in there and pretty much directly at the back of this building you'll find the next level we need behind the rubble. Then once again it's going to be the building directly left of this one so you'll head over there and the final level we need is kind of to the left of the bookshelf. With all three levers clicked we're going to head inside the building that kind of looks like a big inn and it's kind of to the left of the last building we were in as well. You're going to head into that building, you're going to go to the very back where the fireplace is and kind of hidden behind the left side of the fireplace is going to be a torch for us to loot. Once you've got your torch, you'll head back to Valdragon, you'll hand in that quest, and you'll get the torch toy. Now you should have another quest pop up called Torch of Pyreth from Kafos. You'll pick up that quest, and there'll be a chest for us to loot while the torch is active. It's going to be in the Ruby Enclave section just before the Ruby Feast. So it's going to be this little building I'm showing you now. You'll head inside here, you'll use the torch, and you should now see this chest appear that you can loot. Once it's looted, head back and hand in that quest. West. Next up will be a chilling ascent. So we're going to speak to Bobby in the inn once again and you'll get the clerk notes. Now we're going to head over to that frost in Azur Span and it's going to be the door that we defend during the leveling quest line if you can remember that. If not, I'm showing you where it is now. You'll put on your thinking cap, you'll approach the door and then what we're going to do is the pylon directly to the right of the door. You're going to head over to that and use your torch and now your torch should reveal a tablet. Now this tablet does have a little bit of a respawn timer, a couple of minutes. So if you don't see the tablet, don't worry too much. Much, just hang around for a bit and see if it does spawn. A tablet should appear and then what you can do is click on the tablet, you'll get a new quest, you'll head back to the inn in Valdraken and speak to Bobby and hand in that quest. Next up is going to be Idol of Onara, so we're going to speak to Tithris in the inn once again and you'll get the notes for Preservationist Dispatch 2. With that we'll head to Onara and Plains to the Eternal Kurgans area which is kind of like the burial grounds and you want to head to the mound that's directly right to the largest one. You're going to head inside there and use your torch and on the right side should appear a brazier. Once that's done, we can head to the next one, which is going to be the largest burial mound. You're going to go inside that building and it'll be the second room on the right. So not the first room, the second one, you'll go inside there. Once again, make sure your torch is active and the next brazier should appear and the animation should go off. We'll leave this one and then we're going to go to the mound that's furthest to the north. We're going to go inside that and the one we need in this section is going to be on the left side. Once all of those are done, we're going to head to Terakai in our Plains. It's very close by and you'll head inside their large burial mound once again and on the second room on the left so not the first room the second left room you're going to use your torch once again and this time once the animation is finished a little idol should spawn next to it you're going to loot that idol and that is going to give you a quest this quest will take you back to Valdraken you'll turn in the idol and you'll get a new quest called using the idol so learn your toy and activate it and now you're going to be able to see three gems that are hidden around the kind of local area. The first gem is going to be directly in front of the inn so take a couple of steps out of the inn with the toy active you should see the gem on the ground loot that. The next gem is going to be just to the left of the entrance of the auction house so loot that one and then the final gem will be just before the bridge on the left side you'll see kind of like a plant thing and it's going to be behind that plant. Loot all three and then head back in and turn in that quest. The next stage is shifting sands this is quite a quick one we'll speak to Kathos and you'll complete the quest into the sands. You'll pick that up and you'll be sent over to the temporal conflux area within Thaldrassus. You'll head here and you'll land pretty much where I'm showing you now. You'll use the idol and there'll be three time loss fragments pretty close by so you won't have to move too much and you should be able to see them from one spot. Basically just run around and loot these three fragments that I'm showing you now. 
Once you've got all three of them, click to combine them, and then you'll get a new quest. You'll head over to Valdraken and turn that in. Stage nine is what's in a mold, and that's to speak to Bobby within the inn. You'll get a quest called a key story. You'll go over to the weaponsmith and turn that in, and you'll now get the clue for the blacksmith and the apprentice. You'll head over to Coverhood Hollow in an Aran Plains. You'll equip your torch and your thinking cap, and in the center, just kind of northish a little bit, you'll see a stone that you can click on, and then turn literally directly round and walk the other way, and now you should see some rubble in a corner, and you'll be able to click on that rubble, and you'll get yourself the Titan Key Mold. This will give you a quest, which you can now take back to the Weaponsmith in Valdraken and hand that in. The next stage up is going to be Forging is Key. We're going to speak to Bobby again, and you'll get Reforge in a Legend. Turn that in to the Weaponsmith to get the next clue. And now we're going to head to the Waking Shores. And along the overflowing rapids, which is kind of the big river that flows through the centerish of the zone, if you head over there, you'll find these red petals. Looting these petals will give you rose gold dust, and we need 50 of this. So once you land here, do make sure you use your idle toy, because that'll help you find these and it'll point you in the right direction. So land, see if it's pointing you anywhere, follow the where it's pointing, loot the petals, and keep just going along the, the river until you find 50. With 50 obtained, we can now head just south of the Obsidian Citadel, and where the lava meets the water we'll find some of these igneous fluxes we need eight of these and i was able to get all eight basically just running along this coast i don't know if they have a respawn but if you don't find eight just stick around for a bit and they should start to respawn and you can get your eight here once again if you need a little bit of help make sure you are using your idle toy as well once we have the 50 rose gold dust and the eight flux now we're going to head to the obsidian citadel and on the, not the lowest section, but the lower section, you'll find the weaponsmith there, and you'll be able to get the quest, a key to reforge him. During this quest, you should see an extra action button pop up that you can use, that you'll need to use, and towards the end, you'll need to use your torch toy. Now, if for whatever reason you don't have the extra action button, it may be like mine was, where I hadn't actually done the initial quest lines for the Obsidian Citadel on this character. So what I did instead was flew to the very top of the Obsidian Citadel, found the Bronze Drake NPC there, told it I want to skip the quest line, and now I was in the correct phase to be able to see the extra action button. If you still can't see the extra action button, check add-ons because they may be causing some kind of conflict or error. Once you go through all of the stages and you use your extra action button, you should be able to now loot the key and turn in the quest. Now we're on to clue 11, which is a proper burial, and we'll speak to Kathos in the inn and you'll get the Maruk burial banner. For this, we'll firstly want to head over to Sansok Khan in Maruk, which is in Onaran Plains. You should find him in front of this building. We'll speak to him, you'll go through some dialogue, and now you'll get Rathon's burial banner. Next, we'll be heading over to Pinewood Post, once again in Onaran Plains, and here we'll find a, an NPC called Jara. Once again, go through the dialogue and you'll get a clue from them, but we don't actually need to go through the various clue stages. Instead, we're going to head to the final destination, which we'll find in a cave southeast of Nakudon Hold. You'll go there, you'll use your torch, we'll enter the cave, and then in the very back of the cave, you'll want to go up the ramp to the right, head straight to the back, and here you should see the final resting place where we can place the banner. The next stage will be Kirin Tor Knowledge. For this, we'll speak to Bobby once again, and you'll get the Kirin Tor Contract Notes. For this one, we'll need to do Old Karazhan. You'll find Old Karazhan within Deadwind Pass, which is in the Eastern Kingdoms. You'll head over there, you'll go inside. The, the entrance we want is the lower section, the front entrance. We'll head in there, and you'll need to kill Moros. Then we'll need to head all the way around and do the opera event. And then once that's done, we can head all the way around again, and we can make our way to Curator. Once Curator is done, this should lead you into the library section. And here's where we need to start looting some books. To find the books, make sure you have your idle toy active. And the first book for me was over here in this section. Once I'd looted that one, the next book was kind of in the very north corner. So I'd come out of this section, take a left, take another left. And it was over here on this bookshelf. The next book for me was over over just down the ramp where we first entered this library section and it's going to be on one of the bookshelves here and then the final book we need was literally on the bookshelf to the right of the very first book if the order is different for you then just make use of the idol follow it around until you find all the various books and eventually you'll get led to tears legacy once you pick that up you should get a quest we'll take that quest back to bobby in valdraken and that is this stage done next will be clue 13 under suspicion for this we're going to speak to bobby once more and we're going to get the quest from them always listening this is going to be to go and talk to fangly and and that will lead us on to needing to find these receipts across Valdraken. The first receipt we'll find is in these boxes to the left in the auction house. So you'll walk in and directly on the left you should find the receipt. 
The next one will be in the Emerald Enclave. If you head over to where the Transmogrifier NPC is, you head into that building and it'll be on the left side of this room. The next receipt will be over in the Ruby Feast area. It'll be the second house before we actually reach the Ruby Feast. You'll see two Draconids in here kind of arguing and on the barrel in the left of this room we'll find the next receipt. The next destination is the building that's to your immediate right as you enter the kind of obsidian enclave slash sapphire enclave section. You're going to go inside here and the receipt will be immediately on the right of this building as well. Next we'll be heading over to the artisan's market and where the general goods NPCs are not behind them but behind the entire building that they're in we're going to find the note on some boxes behind them. Finally, we'll want to head to the secret part of the inn within the Roasted Ram in Valdraken. So you're going to go there, you're going to bow to the statue once again, make sure you are targeting it, and you'll be sent to the secret section. On the left-hand side will be some boxes, and there we'll find the receipt we need. If you do struggle to find any of the receipts, just make sure your idol is active just in case. Once you collect all of the receipts, you should now get a quest pop-up called a Compiled Report, and we'll hand in that quest and that stage is now completed. Next up will be Clue 14, a Curious Orb. For this, we'll speak to Tithrus within the inn and you'll get a Sphere in Danger, which will give Preservationist Dispatch 3. Next, we'll head to the Storm Shroud Peak in Thaldrassus. And here, what we'll need to do is find a tablet. And then once we find a tablet, we'll find a dirt pile that's associated with it. And we'll repeat that three times. You will need to find the tablets before the dirt piles will be visible. And you will want to have your torch out and also your thinking cap on. The first tablet will be in the most southern cave of the area. We'll head inside there. And at the back, your torch should activate and you'll be able to click on the tablet. Once that's done, we'll head out of the cave and head basically in a straight line forward down here. And on the tree to the left is where we'll find the dirt pile. Next, we'll head to the cave that we can find in the northwest of the area. Once again, in here, your torch should activate and you'll get the next tablet. You'll want to leave the cave and kind of go southwest to the kind of cliff over the edge. And here you should find the next dirt pile. Finally, we'll be entering the main big cave in the north of this area. And you'll head to this kind of middle section. Your torch should activate again. You'll click the tablet. And this time we're going to go over to the east ledge. And next to some rocks, we should find the final dirt pile we need. Now you'll combine the three pieces together and you'll get the Order of Rathmus. You'll take that back to Tithrus in Valdraken and that'll be this stage done. The final clue is going to be the race and you'll be able to pick up the quest from Kathos and this will be to head over to Tear Hold. The first step will be to equip your torch and there'll be these eight statues holding orbs around Tear Hold. Basically all you need to do is go to each of these statues, land below it and you should see your torch activate and that will be that statue done. Four of the statues will be along this kind of outer rim, two of them will be towards more of the center of Tear Hold and then there'll be two on the lower platform to the left. I'll include coordinates down in the description below in case you're a bit confused. Once all the eight orbs are done, you should see a message pop up in your chat. And now the next step is to go to the forge in the middle of Tear Hall. It should be where there's the big face. Walk over to the face and you should see your torch activate. Now you'll receive a 60 minute buff, which will make you passive to most of the mobs we found within Tear Hold. What you'll do next is head into the lower section of Tear Hold and there's going to be these rooms off to the side. There should be six of these rooms and in each of those rooms, you'll find an item. Across all of the rooms, there'll be four green items and two blue items that you need to loot. I definitely recommend making use of the idol item to make it a bit easier to find these items because they're going to be on the floor in a broken pot that's a little bit hard to see at times. Once you have the two blue items and the four green items, you can click the green items to combine them into blue items and you should end up with four blue items total. These side rooms are going to be found on multiple of the lower levels. So you'll go onto one floor, you'll check it to see if there's any side rooms and then you'll move down to the next lower level. Once you have all four blue items, we're going to head back up to the outside of tier hold once again and you should find these four blue buildings that have kind of like a blue twister going on inside them. Enter one of them and you should easily find a console. Speak to the console and you should be able to input an item. What that'll do is remove one of the blue items from your bags and you need to do that on the following three buildings. Once all four buildings now have an item placed into them, you should once again get another message and now you can head to the very top level of tier hold. Here you should see a console with an orb on it with a quest. You'll pick up the quest and there'll be some mobs that spawn. You'll defeat the mobs and now you'll get an orb. You'll place the orb back where we initially picked up the quest. You'll get another quest and you'll get an item and then you'll need to loot the orb once more. Once all of that is done, the NPCs from this whole event should show up 
and you should be able to move over to them, hand in the quest, and now we're finally done with Who Done It. From doing that, you'll get the achievement and also your new alpaca that wears a hat. Next up, we'll be talking about the Mimron's Jump Jets mount, and for this, what we need to do is obtain three booster parts. And once all three have been obtained, we can take them to Valdraken to craft the mount. The first booster part we need will be on Jagero Isle, which we'll find in the Cape of Stranglethorn. You'll head over there, and you'll find these three brazers. Now what we need to do is have three people here, they'll use a torch each on each of the brazers and it'll spawn a mob. You'll kill that mob and we'll be able to loot it for the first booster part. However, you don't need to light them yourselves, so that's not a problem. As long as other people light them and the mob spawns, then you'll be able to loot it and get your item. The second booster part we need will be found within Fellwood. It'll be kind of in the north section of Fellwood where there's that large kind of fell pool. And for me, there was meant to be kind of a step involving a water elemental. But every time I've checked, that water elemental has just not been there, and instead the part has just been on the ground, ready to be looted. So all I can assume is that stage is completely gone now, and you can skip that and just loot the part directly without having to worry about anything else. If that's not the case for you, I definitely would recommend turning off war mode and checking again, because when I was on war mode, it was completely bugged. The third booster part we need is going to be in front of the dark portal in Blasted Lands. You'll head over there. I was on the phase where it was the Iron Horde. I don't know if that needs to be that particular phase, but you'll head over there and there'll be the booster part at the bottom of the stairs. Now, what's going to happen is, though, there's going to be cannon fire happening consistently, and that's going to knock you around. And that's a problem because when trying to loot the booster part, it's going to have quite a long kind of channel. So you just need to keep trying this until you get that period where the fire stops and eventually you can loot your third booster part. If you do need to be in the Iron Horde phasing of Blasted Lands and you don't see that, on the very north of the zone right at the entrance is where you'll find the NPC to change the phasing. Now finally we'll take our three booster parts to Valdraken. And just to the left of the NPCs that handle work orders, you'll find a forge. You'll walk up to it, you'll use any of the booster parts, a cast will happen, and you'll get yourself the mount. As easy as that. So those are the two mounts that are obtainable from the Secrets of Azeroth event. As mentioned before, there's no time limit on this, so you can come back and get these whenever you want and whenever you feel ready. But it was definitely a fun event, and hopefully we see more stuff like this in the future. Either way, hopefully this guide has helped you out. Look out for more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.